Let's look ahead. Uh, game three, Thursday in Orlando. What's the message J.B. Bickerstaff delivers to this team? Expect Orlando to be better at home is the first message. Uh, they were 29-12 and 12 at home this year. Young teams play better at home than they do on the road. That's not a surprise. Some of the guys that um, have been non-factors so far in the first two games of this series are probably going to get a boost and a jolt from being back home. Cole Anthony, maybe Jalen Suggs. Um, it's just the way that it usually goes in the playoffs. So that's the first message. And I think the other one is, hey, guys, we're up 2-0, and um, we haven't trailed at any point in the series. It's only been tied once in this series for 16 total seconds. So we have done the things that we needed to do in the first two games, and that was good enough to get us up 2-0. But we can still be better. We can take care of the ball. The Cavs are last right now in turnovers of any playoff team. So we can take care of the ball better. Offensively, we can probably be better than what we have shown. From a three-point shooting standpoint, we can probably be better than what we have shown. It's hard to criticize too much when there's been back-to-back wire-to-wire wins to open up a 4-5 series in the playoffs. But I do think there's another level that the Cavs can get to and I think JB is going to try and instill that message and say, even though we're up 2-0, there are things that we need to get better at, especially if we're talking long-term and big picture. How big of an emphasis do you put on game three? Because you know the drill. Playoffs are a long thing. You want to keep going and you want to get to the next round in as few games as possible. Yeah, I mean, I think the Cavs have to treat it, Dave, the same way that they did game one and game two. Uh, they can't take it for granted. They can't allow a young team to gain some confidence. They can't allow a young, hungry team to feel like they belong in this series. The next step for the Cavs is to show a level of killer instinct that, Dave, sometimes throughout the course of this season, they have not shown. They have let teams back in in the fourth quarter. They have given up some fourth quarter leads. They allowed Orlando to make a run in game two of the fourth quarter. Um, but but I think if, if the Cavs can show a level of killer instinct, um, this could be a very, very short series. There is an opportunity for this team to make this as short a series as possible, not have to worry about anything else, and try and start focusing on Boston. But before they can do that, you know, they have to win game three and game four. They have to take advantage of this opportunity. They have to take advantage of this lesser opponent that is in front of them. And the Cavs have to do to the Magic um, what the Knicks did to the Cavs. Do you sense their confidence is kind of growing? I mean, because the, the playoffs last year were not kind to them. Do you, do you sense that they're, kinda, that they're kinda starting to see how things go in the playoffs? It's not even just their confidence. It's what you said right there, Dave. It's an understanding of playoff basketball and everything that's involved with playoff basketball. There's regular season physicality and there's playoff level physicality, right? There's regular season intensity and there's playoff level intensity. And because the Cavs were able to go through that last year, Darius Garland, Evan Mobley, Isaac Okoro, you see those guys having a better understanding of that. You see those guys playing through contact a different kind of way. You see them picking up their effort on the defensive end of the floor. Conversely, it looks like Orlando is the team like the Cavs from last year, where they don't fully understand what playoff level physicality is, where they don't fully understand what that extra effort means, where they don't fully understand how to keep their composure and their poise when things aren't going their way in a hostile environment. So for the Cavs, you can see at home in the first two games that there's more of a knowledge of those things, more of an understanding of those things. Now they have to take it on the road where things are going to be going against them. But here's the thing, Dave. Last year, Madison Square Garden, game three, I've been covering this Cavs team for 10 years now. I've been in Oracle Arena for the NBA Finals, right? I've been in TD Garden for big-time playoff games. I've been in Scotiabank Arena in Toronto for big-time playoff games. Those are some of the raucous environments that I've ever been in in my entire life. And last year, Game 3, Madison Square Garden, that was as close to an NBA Finals atmosphere. The floor was shaking beneath me. The national anthem, it was Tori Kelly 
who can belt, right? She was drowned out. You couldn't even hear her because the crowd was so into it. They were so wild. They were so excited for that game. So for the Cavs to be in that environment last year, I mean, this is no offense to Orlando, but I don't think the Kia Center is going to get to that level of intense. So because the Cavs were in that environment against that team last year in the first round, I don't think they're going to be caught off guard by anything that happens um, going into game three or the remainder of this series.